Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Ollie Burton. Isn't that cool? Isn't that weird to, <laughs> to think about and hear for the first time? I've graduated. As you can see, I'm filming somewhere completely different in a brand new filming set. I am absolutely exhausted. It's taken me a couple of days to get everything kind of set up to how I want it, especially to a state in which I can film, but I'm finally more or less there. Now there's a lot that I want to go through in this video, it kind of... Now there's a lot that I want to touch on in this video, we're kind of talking about what's happened, uh, what's the plan for the immediate future and then what comes next. So the first thing to talk about is I graduated last Friday, so six days ago. Now as I'm recording this video, we had our virtual graduation. Now Warwick University decided that in-person graduations weren't happening. Um, this year, which was slightly disappointing, I'm not gonna lie, after four years of studying for a medical degree, and especially when other universities around the UK, many other universities, have managed to facilitate in-person graduations, it is a bit disheartening, especially since we've all worked ridiculously hard to get through an accelerated medical degree, but those are the decisions, they want to keep us all safe, and I respect that. You know, if that's if that's the way things have to be. So we had our virtual graduation. Me and my housemate sat in our living room, joining everyone on Teams, where there were some really nice speeches from various members of of the medical school. Then one of my student colleagues led us all in reading out the Declaration of Geneva, which is which is the physician's oath that you take before you start practice as a doctor in the UK. A lot of people think that we still take the Hippocratic Oath before starting work as doctors. That's just a falsehood. Um, I'm sure there are medical schools where they use the Hippocratic Oath, but the Hippocratic Oath actually has quite a few problems with it uh, relating to modern medical practice that I'll, I'll make a dedicated other video talking about the problems with the Hippocratic Oath. But anyway, nowadays, most places use the Declaration of Geneva or the Physician's Pledge, as it's sometimes known. Which again, with it being virtual and done over teams, was, was a bit of an unmitigated disaster. Because you have to imagine you have one person on their end on teams reading the Declaration. You then presumably got everyone in their various rooms trying to read the declaration at the same time. We had two of us, myself and my housemate, sat next to each other trying to read the declaration at the same time and it, it was just, it, you were never going to coordinate that because of the delay and you never know at what rate somebody's going to speak and, uh, and all of that. Um, whether that would have been any better in person I have no idea but it absolutely did not work <laughs> over over a virtual graduation. But these are, are challenging times and we do what we can. And then there were some prizes um, to be read out as well, which can kind of be grouped, I think, into three uh, categories of achievement. There are a set of peer-nominated awards. Um, chiefly, these are called the Warwick Doctor Awards, which I don't know whether they existed before or not. But like I say, these are peer-nominated prizes for various categories, so it was things like kindness, integrity, humility, innovation, and so on. And I was lucky enough to come away with one of these prizes, at least I think I did, because our internet connection decided to break up right at the point when they were reading these prizes, and I'm still, I'm, I'm like 99% sure that I won the Innovation and Creativity Prize for these Warwick Doctor Awards, but there's still a part of me that thinks I misheard, and it's very possible that I did, so if I do have that wrong, please forgive me, then I was commended and didn't win. I'm pretty sure I won. And then the second group of prizes are, I guess, what I could call the Executive Awards, perhaps. These are ones for which you have to self-nominate, or the faculty will recognise you uh, for something. So in my case, I submitted for the Pro Dean Education Prize, which is intended to kind of demonstrate commitment to medical education, and you had to submit a four-page evidenced uh, docket, essentially, on why you felt you deserved the award and making references to, to everything you were citing. And this was the one I was really eagerly waiting to hear about, because I put a lot of work into the application and it wasn't easy to write, especially when there's lots of things you want to talk about. You've got to be very selective and careful with your wording. And it actually came down to two of us, um, in the end, myself and our course mate Joe, who is one of the smartest people you will ever meet. 
he is going to make an absolutely exceptional doctor. Um, and they said during the prize giving, we really couldn't decide between the two of you that submitted for this, the two that it came down to. So they took it back to the panel and the team, and it was actually decided this year that they would fund both of us to to jointly win the prize, which I thought was an amazing thing to do. So that comes with a nice trophy and some prize money, which is always a good thing to have. And then the last group of prizes are the academic prizes, essentially, which are uh, essentially for the people who do either the best in the written papers, the best in the clinical components of the course, the OSCEs and the OSLAs, the best overall and so on. And trust me, I am on paper a worse than average medical student. I was never in with a chance of winning any of these, but the people that did win absolutely deserved them. They smashed their exams, they worked so hard. And again, it was really nice to see those efforts rewarded uh, for those people. And then basically that was more or less it. But we decided that we were gonna go up to the medical school after some negative lateral flows, of course, to take some photos because we really wanted to do what we could with the day, even though we couldn't celebrate with all of our friends and colleagues. So I'll, I'll just put the photos up on screen for you now, but we, we took a few things up. We took our stethoscopes and white coats. Since we don't have graduation gowns, that's not a thing we get. Uh, we thought, you know what, we'll wear white coats for this one time in our lives when we can actually wear them. Um, in, in substitute for a graduation gown. But then there absolutely has to be a very, very special shout out to um, Abby in the year below. You'll have seen her YouTube, probably MedB Medic. You'll have read her blog, the MedB blog, and seen her around, who put in an absolutely astonishing amount of effort. And just the, the stuff she brought, guys, like she'd made us all um, mortar boards which she'd, she'd assembled herself and painted, she brought confetti cannons, she brought us copies of the Physician's Pledge which you may be able to see up on my shelf there. She just really went absolutely all out to try and make sure that we could have a special day and um, not only that but Abby completely unbeknownst to me and behind my back and, and not just Abby but a lot of you guys out there who I've spoken to before, some of you I've never spoken to but would like to speak to, um, Abby actually put together this amazing celebratory video for me, kind of looking back over the last four years, things I'd posted and people that I've spoken to and you guys that I know from the community, some of you that I've never had the good fortune to speak to. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, it made me it made me well up. Um, I was absolutely not expecting it. I had no suspicion at all that that was going on. Um, but but what a lovely leaving gift uh, to have, and it's really put everything into perspective and and taken me back, taking me back to the beginning of that journey. And a journey, of course, that that has come to an end as a new journey starts. I came to Warwick in 2017, a fresh young biology graduate from Newcastle University and now four years later uh, I find myself back in Newcastle but as a doctor, Ollie Burton instead, MBCHB, BSC, too many letters. But I've now got about a week left before I start the shadowing period for my new job as an FY1. Specifically I'm coming in to do an academic foundation programme here that is themed in medical education research and it's also going to be themed in neurosurgery. So I've managed to kind of set up this job around my two main career interests. I'm going to be starting at the Freeman Hospital, uh, which is basically over the other side of uh, Jesmond from where I am, for those of you that know Newcastle. And then the majority of my jobs are going to be just over the road over there at the Royal Victoria Infirmary, which is the big tertiary centre hospital in Newcastle. I really wanted to come back here just because I loved the city when I was studying my undergrad. It was one of those places where you get the feeling when you visit it that you just think, yeah, this is the place that I want to be for a little while. And I've got a new place. Um, I'm going to give you guys a full tour of this place, not that the tour is going to be very long, there's not that much to see, but it's a definite quality of life upgrade. I was determined to live by myself after seven years of student living and living with other people. I put up a bit more money and decided to live by myself for a little bit because there, there's just so much content that I want to make, there's so much that I want to do, and just having a space that is my own and I can do with 
what I want, um, more or less, without upsetting anybody, especially in somewhere as nice as this. I mean, you guys can't really see what the rest of this place looks like, but it is beautiful, and I couldn't have asked for anywhere nicer to live, as close to my job as it needs to be, or for the amount of money that I'm paying for it, which really is nowhere near as much as you would think for what it is. It still just feels like a bit of a dream, really. I got my top choice of academic jobs, my, my number one possible ranked job in the one city where I really wanted to work with the theme that I really wanted in one of the most beautiful houses that I've ever been in in my life. Everything just really feels like it's come together in a weird way and, and of course I have you guys to thank for all of that because the YouTube and the projects and the recognition and the networking and the meeting people that all of that has brought me in speaking to you guys and, and networking and learning more from you guys and trying to help the community. Just just none of this would have been possible. You know, this is, this is what I always try to get across. We're on this journey together. I would not be able to do all of these things without you guys that are watching. And that's what motivates me to want to keep giving back and keep doing what I can for you guys and making more stuff. So this is just an update video more than anything, it doesn't have any real point, but just to let you know what's going on and keep you up to date with my goings on. If anybody wants to come over for a coffee, let's hang out either here or at the hospital or in Newcastle, whatever you like, it would be great to meet some of you guys. But baby steps, there's so much more, so much more to come as I start my role as a junior doctor in the NHS. But that's more or less where I'm gonna wrap it, guys. This is just the beginning of a brand new journey as I start as a junior doctor in the NHS. And I'm really, really excited to take you guys on that journey with me. Take care and I will see you very soon. Bye.